she came to the state fair and uh, that time Paul played and uh, I think both of us had tears in our eyes, you know, thinking about the concert that he had put on and uh, kind of touched, I think, all of our heart for all of us, uh, Adrian included. It was quite a beautiful day. Thank you. Uh, I have, back home, Mescalero, of what I call home. We moved there with my dad, um, Pastor Bob Scott. He was a missionary um, for many years down in Mescalero for 32, I believe, 33 years. And he just recently retired about four years ago and they moved back, my parents moved back to Wisconsin. But they spent many years. I moved there in 84 down to Mescalero when I was a teen, rambunctious teen. And there was many of us because they had brought six of us kids. So when I hear people back in Mescalero refer to me, that's always just Pat. So when I hear that, and I don't hear it up here, but I know I'm home. And um, up here it's Patty, which I have assumed. And, and then uh, I don't hear Patricia anymore unless it's my boss or it's my grandma's already gone. So, um, But over the years, I've trying to find myself as a young person and trying to identify that I was Native Americans because my parents are Anglo. I was adopted at birth. Um, they adopted five of us kids and had one of their own and were all from different tribes. So my reservation is from the Omaha and Winnebago tribes in Nebraska. But to me, Mescalero is always going to be home. And in the teen years, I was really having a hard time just finding where I was in life and what I was doing. And I, I often would see Paul at the post office, He's going to check his mail, and he'd pull up in that picture and don't surely <laughs> pick up. And you know, and it was, I finally got the nerve, and I would see him, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go talk to him. So he got out of his truck, and he went to go check his mail, and I approached him when he came out, and I introduced myself. And he listened to me and I just told him how I was struggling in my life. I had to have been about 13 years old. And it was really hard trying to find my place. I spent a lot of time in my free time with the traditional counselors. I learned a lot from them. They taught me how to be, they taught me about the language they taught me about the medicine. I was a sponge. I just really took it all in. And I asked Paul, I said, what am I doing wrong? You know, what am I missing? Because I still feel this emptiness. And he, said, he went and turned around, he dug in his truck, and I thought, now what? You know, and he turned around and he gave me this tape of his, and he says, I, I wrote this a while back, but I have these songs. There's one, I'm gonna give this to you. I want you to listen to it. I want you really to listen to the words and really take it in. And he goes, if you listen to it, it'll help you. And it was the four ways. I took it home, I listened to it over and over and over and over. And I was like, wow. And he goes, I'm not gonna tell you Anything, that song will tell you itself. Protect yourself, listen to it, and, and go from there. And I was just blown away, and I did. I often would reflect on that tape as a teen. And then as we got older, my parents would often, we lived um, up kind of on a hill, and the parsonage would be up there with the church. And, my parents would put the lawn chairs out in the evening, and I remember hearing Paul do a concert over at um, the Catholic Church, and he would be having his system up, and he'd be singing over there, and it would just echo all the way down the canyon. It was beautiful. The moon would be coming out, and he'd be doing the, what was it, the bazaar, 
at that time and he was part of the performers and he would sing and it was just beautiful. It echoed down the canyon. And it was just something, I'm gonna miss those days. And then after we, I moved up here, it will almost be 20 years since I've lived up here in Albuquerque. And I reconnected, and I was real surprised because I've met Katrina and Gabe a long time ago, also in Mescalero, as students at the Mescalero Apache schools. And I was substitute teaching at that time, and I got to really kind of know the kids a little bit. And, and I got to reconnect with them once we got up here. And lo and behold, there's a lot of Mescalero that do live up here. And to me, it's, I connect with my Omaha people, but I also connect with Muscalero. I worked for the APS for public schools for many years, and I always look out. If I saw someone, a student with Muscalero on it, I'd seek them out. And so it was nice to finally connect with Katrina and Gabe after all these years and seeing their lives and how they've changed and where they are today. And we moved in the kind of like the neighborhood where they were. And my son goes to school with Katrina, well, used to go to school with Katrina's daughter, to the same school, and often my other half, Travis, will walk and go pick up my son from school. And pretty soon, it was a daily kind of thing, Paul and Travis were both going to get the kids. And they would just talk. And I knew if Travis wasn't home at a certain time, it's because, OK, old man's talking again. <laughs> he loved to talk. He loved to share his stories and tell you what, what, what he could, could remember, what it was all about you know, back in the day. And that was just really something, was just to listen. But we also re often referred to him as old man. Because from what I understood in Muscalero, when you get that title, old man, that's out of respect. Because a lot of the songs that they sing back there talk about that old man down the road. What he has, what he's, what he, what, where he's been and what he knows. And he'll tell you. And so we've also carried that. And I will I miss the old man very much. It's been a real pleasure and a real honor to be a part of this family, to get to know them and see where they've come. It's been a privilege to listen to him and just sit there and listen to all the things he loves to talk about, just the top of his hat, just whatever. But he was never anyone of judgment. He was always there to just lift you up and kind of teeter it back to you and say, okay, now where do you go from here? You know, take this. Take what I've told you and carry on with your life. And don't ever give up because all of us are still following down that same road you're going on. So I look, I look forward to that day when we'll all be together in that another spot, you know, and, and when it's our time to go home but his music will be cherished forever. And I will always, always carry that song with me, the far ways of how we protect ourselves. We use what we have on our own to protect ourselves, and then we share it and pass it on. And you don't keep it, you give it to the next. And it's been such an honor. But thank you and God bless. I think we can go on and on with many of the lessons that we learned from Paul. One of the most powerful stories he shared with me and lessons about life I learned on some of our travels. We talked about spirituality, sacredness. For some of those that may not know or may not be versed in tradition, sacred is something that we cherish in a very respectful manner. Anything that is sacred is secret. We do not perform any of our sacred ceremonies in public. Same thing in music, you know, we used to talk about that. Very careful as to 
not using certain words, certain ceremonies and song because those ceremonies only are practiced at home. Mm -hmm. One of the lessons that he had taught me, and I use it in a lot of my lectures, a lot of my classes, or when I MC, is the power of sacredness. Sacredness, as I said, is something that is secret. One of the lessons he told me was, you know, you can take an object and put it in your hand and term it as sacred. I look at you, each of you, individually and say, what is this? If I said this was my essence, my power, my life, everything that I stand for, in reality, you would probably kind of chuckle and say, it's only a pair of keys. But if I turn around and brought something out here in my hand and said, this is what is sacred, this is me, this is my essence. Your curiosity, the mystery that Paul always emanated, that mystery, the unknown, as long as it stays unknown, it has power. Again, a lesson learned by the medicine men. 